Hi everyone, happy Monday. We just finished taping FYI Philly and you know I always try and take a chance while I'm still at home before I get into the station and get all the work done for the day and get everything together for our five o'clock newscast just to pop in and say hi and see how everyone is doing um, and send you all a little bit of love. So we had a Pride special that we just taped for FYI Philly. It will air this weekend at seven o'clock, which, um, which is great. So we have um, a chance to spotlight so many of the members of our LGBTQ community all across Philadelphia, business owners, designers, uh, chefs, people who are doing really great things. And so we're gonna take a chance to spotlight them this Saturday at 7 p.m. on FYI Philly, um, saying hi to some of our friends popping in. Michelle, Steven, Nilsa. So yeah, I wore this. I was like, well, we're doing this pride special. And so really we've been, uh, you know, Priscilla's been painting rainbows. We've been all about rainbows for the past uh, couple of months because we just love them and we've been trying to use them as a sign of hope. And then of course, being that it's pride month, it worked perfectly. So here we are just um, wearing all these colors of the rainbow that are, uh, we just, we love and, and, uh, and just spreading so much love on this show. It's been great. So I wanted to check in to see how you guys are feeling because uh, counties are moving to green. And so things are starting to open. We uh, did outdoor dining this past Saturday and the Saturday before here in Philadelphia, which really felt um, kind of normal, right? In a time that's been completely uh, unprecedented and weird and stressful and strange. And so we, we had a chance to kind of go and sit and um, support our local businesses, which we've been trying to do in a lot of different ways through the closures, but now things are opening. And I just wanted to check to see if you guys are part of the group of people who are gonna get out there and, and dine and shop. And uh, I have a hair appointment later this week which is crazy because as you can see, I feel like a Sasquatch. I'm like totally overgrown like everybody else. What do we have over three and a half months of no, uh, you know, of everything closed and we did, you know, we, we did what we had to do, right? So let's see. Uh, Carol says just announced indoor dining 25% in New Jersey on, on July 2nd. So Carol is really excited about that. I know a lot of people are excited um, to get back to their normal life and their routine. But Gwendolyn is saying, um, be wise, like be smart when you go out there. And I think that is absolutely uh, part of this process, right? When you go back, um, obviously when you sit and you eat, you're not gonna be wearing a mask, right? Because you're gonna be eating. But what I have seen really great, you know, the patrons using the, the restrooms are putting their masks on, the, the ser everywhere we've been, the servers, uh, the hosts, um, anybody who has been uh, out and serving us, when I go into stores, I feel pretty good about um, about what I'm seeing out there because I think people want to get back to life, but they want to stay safe. They want to stay healthy. You know, we were seeing all this crazy news uh, of the uptick in cases, especially in states that, that stayed open. So like Florida has this surge in cases and... Um, and so it's been, it's been wild, but the Center City District did this great like amazing survey this past week, which um, to try to give businesses, you know, an idea of like, what are people gonna feel comfortable doing and to help guide them through the reopening. And so far I've found only 20% of um, people were willing to actually get back to shopping, get back to, to dining. They found that of those 20%, most of them were younger people. So, um, you know, that the older, population was going to take it slower. And as the weeks go on, wait and see, right? There's a lot of industries that have to come a long way. Like in three and a half months, travel has, has taken a huge hit. Um, entertainment, you know, everything was on pause. So slowly things will start to come back. But I think there are a lot of people who are like, you know what, let it roll out for a few weeks and then we'll see how it goes. Right? So, uh, Mary says she's going to get her haircut next week. I'm getting my haircut at the end of this week. Uh, I, I've been hold, holding out as long as I could. And so, um, Catherine, oh, oh, she's asking Giuseppe, where is this located? So Nate says it's only surging because testing is huge now. And you know what? That's, um, that's definitely, I'm sure part of this equation, right? 
So um, a lot of it is what we don't know. And, and I, I just had this conversation over the weekend. Initially, we were they were saying, well, surfaces are really a big thing. And we were wiping and wiping everything. And then the CDC said, well, we're, we're doing more testing and we're finding maybe the surfaces are not, uh, the, the ability to contract this is not as, as severe from touching a surface as it is to have somebody like, you know, sneeze in your presence, right? So the masks are good. I think it's, every day we learn something new and yeah, more people are getting tested. So I, I think you can assume if more people get tested, then, then the numbers will go up, right? Um, but I think that everyone just has to use their own um, best judgment when they go out. Allison says, you're not comfortable yet going out to dinner. Yeah, and so everyone's gonna do what they feel comfortable with. And I think, and I just was talking to my neighbor and he said, oh, I have to go back to work, right? I'm nervous to go back into the building. And I said, well, for me, we've been in the building the whole time. My husband and I both work in the news business. We've both uh, been, you know, every station had people who were in and people who were out. We were, we've both been on the in. And um, we have been uh, kind of going business as usual-ish since we started. For me, this was good. I'm an extrovert. Last year I was home uh, with a concussion for seven weeks and it was really hard for me to be home um, and to be like not in the world. So while it was very stressful the first couple of weeks kind of getting used to maneuvering and wiping and washing hands and um, which I always do anyway, but uh, you know, just there was a little bit of um, of trepidation with that. So I think that's going to be the case for every single person who goes back to work, right? Like we've all taken the last three and a half months to do what we can do. We pivoted as best we could in whatever circumstances we had. Some people are home, they haven't left home, they've stayed home and they did the stay at home order the best way we could. There are people who had to be out and about like us and so we walk in the store and I don't know if this is crazy, my mom always tells me I'm neurotic and that's probably true. Um, it definitely is true. But when I walk, we walk in, we wash our clothes from the day uh, and we take a shower and we put fresh clothes on and then we, then we go about like having dinner and everything at the house. So I think that every single person is gonna have an, uh, a re-entry process into whatever they are going back into. And for a lot of people, I think what's gonna be interesting is to see um, that they're not, that you can't just like flip the switch and we all just go back to normal. Every single person has to enter or re-enter their life and their schedule the way that feels comfortable for them. So if you don't feel comfortable going to dinner, keep doing takeout, keep cooking at home, right? We have choices. There are things that I think about is that um, the children still are not in school. There are some camps happening. There are some kind of childcare options. The daycares are coming back. But I also think, um, you know, I, I think about the parents who are going back to work and then what happens with their childcare scenario. Uh, that is, that's one of the main things that I think about um, in this kind of re-entry process. And then hopefully look at September and say, okay, you know, we get these kids back into school and people can get back into life, but if we're healthy and we're safe. So, um, so Terry says, staying home feeds anxiety. People need to take the leap. And I think that they do, but I think they have to do it at their own pace, right? And so I think there has to be a lot of compassion coming back into real life, um, real life, right? Or, or normal or whatever you want to call it. I think there also has to be, um, you know, the employers have to be there for their, for their people and say, okay, we get it. You have, you know, you have this going on, you have this going on. It, you feel edgy about this or, um, some people like being at home. I just had about five conversations over the weekend with people who love being at home, working from home. Now I, I didn't do that because I didn't, that wasn't my, my journey. We, I was one of the people in the studio. So I don't, I never worked from home. I don't, I don't even know what it feels like, but so many of you have, right? So, um, some people like that. I wonder if some employers will, will keep it right. Um, so, uh, so it's just, it's interesting to me as things start to open up and I know a lot of people are excited about it, but at the same time, like, okay, let me say, so Jean Marie is like, I'm ready. Let's go. And, uh, and Bruce is also getting a haircut. I know. You know what I was saying? There's going to be a lot of hair on the floors of those salons, right? But Chris is saying 
hey, I'm ready to cautiously get back to normal. I think cautious is a good word because where we are, right? Like none of us have ever been through anything like this before. We have no experience with, with like, oh, all of a sudden we're, we're back, we're, we're home, right? We don't see anybody. And now we're going to start to see people. And how do we do it, right? It's almost like starting over. Uh, I said to some, oh, Denise says she hates working from home. I, and I know a lot of people who feel that way. I think, and Denise, you can come back in and tell me if this is your experience, but I have a lot of people who tell me working from home, there's no separation between work life and home life. You're constantly being like called upon to, where are you? We need you. And, and then your home space starts to take on the, 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 you know, all of the feelings of being at work, right? So maybe for some people that's been too much. But for other people, they love the flexibility. They're like, I'm getting more work done. So it's interesting. And I think this week, I don't know if you feel this way, but I woke up today on Monday and, I, and this morning and I said, all right, we have a new week, but this one feels different from the, what seems like the, mil the millions of weeks before this, where it just was, I mean, we were just doing our best, weren't we? Um, yeah. So Kristen's like in Tennessee, they're, they're, they're backtracking in Florida. The cases are, sur are surging. They're backtracking. Um, they're, they're, they're saying, okay, wait, 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 hold on. We need to look at this again. I think the whole thing is that we, um, no one has the answer. We don't know, right? There's no like, there's no guide for this. Um, there's no playbook. And I think what I've learned is that I'm very type A. I'm a very type A person and I like a deadline. I like a schedule. <laughs> I learned this last year when I had this concussion, it wasn't like, oh, you have a broken leg. It's going to take six weeks to fix. This was, this is, your, this is your body. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know how you're going to feel. And it was really, really, I mean, there was so much anxiety with that. And I think so many people have a lot of anxiety for a lot of different reasons. And some people are experiencing this emotion for the very first time. There are people who, who feel it more often and there are some people who are all of a sudden saying, what is this that I'm feeling? I don't get it, I don't understand. But I feel that in one way or another, no matter who you are, no matter what boat you're on in this storm, because we're not all on the same one, at some point this has added a stress that some of us are just not familiar with and there's no guidebook for us to look at and be like, oh, here's how we fix this or this is when it, this is over. So I have personally said, I am going to take this week by week, right? I can't even set long-term goals here because I don't even know where this thing goes. I, I hope my kid goes back to school and that we feel comfortable and safe with that and all of us. And I hope the cases continue to um, knock wood, decline here in Pennsylvania um, and New Jersey and New York is doing so much better. And so I hope, right? I hope our hospitals, um, I hope our hospitals stay um, clear and able to function and our amazing frontline healthcare workers are incredible. Um, Heath says, I don't have any anxiety, I'm working and blessed. And you know what? It's true. I think everybody handles things um, in their own way. And for some people, whether they have to go into an office like me or they're staying at home, Right now, I mean, the, the unemployment is, is, uh, is unbelievable. A lot of people have lost their jobs. And so I try to also, like he count my blessings, right? Every day, like, okay, we have jobs, we're healthy. Um, I think a lot of people are mourning the loss of something and, 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 and absolutely the, more, the loss of someone. And this has taken a lot of lives and a lot of people have been very, very, uh, personally um, devastated by this. And then there's the trickle down and all like the little things that people felt like they they lost and, and big things too. Weddings, there were funerals that happened and people couldn't go and gather for that. And, um, you know, it's been, I think it's been a, a lot, a lot of graduations have been canceled. School hasn't been happening. Little things, and even just people saying, oh, I, I had this concert and I'm so bummed, right? That, um, that I can't go. And I said, well, I mean, I read something about this. It's called comparative grief. And everyone is allowed to mourn the little things and the big things and the everything in your own way. This is, this is your life, right? Um, and it's okay to have all these feelings that you're having. But I think this week people are, are saying, okay, 
now we're coming back in. And how do we feel coming back in? Um, Giuseppe's been working 80 hours a week and, and never, never stopped working. And that's us, right? But I think for me, that was good. Like I need a place to go, get dressed, have a routine, have a schedule. That's, that's, that's been good for me. So I've been, I've been happy um, to be able to do that. And yes, I think every single one of us who has a job should be ha absolutely happy to have one right now. Um, so Christopher drives an 18 wheeler from coast to coast. You've been to every state since this happened and you haven't gotten sick. Christopher, this is a, this is a success story. And I know you're, I'm sure, taking every precaution and doing everything. So um, good for you, continued good health to you um, and safe travels on the road. And let's see. So Darian says working from home wasn't an option uh, for you. And it, it wasn't really an option for me either. I mean, it, I, I guess it, if I had, but I just was, you know, they kind of said, all right, we're gonna just split the station up and we're gonna do it like this. And so I just happened to be somebody who, who was going in and we've had a great group. And I want to tell you, um, I, for those of you who watched the six ABC 50th anniversary special, and I know a lot of you did, I, the, and people always say, Oh, it really seems like a family, such a family. It is such a wonderful, beautiful group of people, uh, who are so supportive and have become like family. A lot of, you know, we, um, a lot of us had babies in 2014. So the kids are growing up together. It's really, it's really great. Um, but I, I want to just say on behalf of all the people who have worked with us in the station together, we've had this and the people at home have been working crazy hard too, but all I can really speak to are the people that I see every day. And we have, I mean, workhorses, like people who have been putting their everything like 500% into getting the product out, getting the news out. Um, and some people have written in saying, Hey, can we get more good news? We love good news. If you have good news stories, sh send them my way. That is what, what I love to do. Um, that is my, uh, my personal calling and why I love the voice that I have and the, 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 the ability to, to connect with all of you is so special, but also to celebrate our neighbors. If we cannot like literally raise, put two hands together and clap for everyone who is doing an incredible job right now. Like that's what we should be doing because, uh, let me just see. I read one thing that says, oh, so many places are going out of business. Now this is Brett and from Tom's river. And I, I know it has been, it's been really, really heartbreaking. And so whatever way in our own way we can support our local businesses i mean we try to do it as, as best as we can and i know also like economic times are hard so it's not a, an option as much for some people as they would like it to be but here comes tracy allen with our ppp positivity prayers and patience oh linda i'm gonna save this message look i'm saving it so i can tell tanya that you said hi oh that's so cute that's, that's great. So I have to run into the station to put some stuff together. I actually have a good news story coming up at five o'clock tonight. If you have anything that you uh, would like to see, shout it out, find me here, post it here, send me a private, um, a direct message. I try to get to them as much as I can. Um, I hope you guys are staying safe. I uh, wish you all the health and all the happiness and all the calm because I know things have been like and uh and tracy tracy ppp positivity prayers and patience that's what we got right and as you can see i'm just uh in in our pride i'm just in rainbows because we have we just filmed our pride special for fyi philly so saturday night at seven fyi philly uh and i hope you guys are all doing great you're awesome love you and happy monday